I can't wait till we finally exercise this bastard and put the video up on YouTube. You'll have Hell to. yeah. <laughs> we still need more. Someday I'll save Christmas with a vampire. Oh, fine. But he's your responsibility, Grim. I see. Congratulations on another successful peace summit, Mr. President. Don't congratulate me. Congratulate the peacemaker. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Lord of the Spice, here with a Sam and Max Season 2 Let's Play. I've already played Season 1, uh, but just to start things off, I guess I'll go ahead and say the original recording for this was absolute garbage. What? Oh, uh, no, why are you the- why do What? Oh, okay. Re the game starts by introducing us to the Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz, but for some reason he has a machine gun and he wants to kill us. Is that mechanical goon one of yours? So naturally, the only way to beat Rusty the singing robot in 1v1 hand-to-hand -hand combat is to confuse him. I got to go where I wanna go. Do what I wanna do. Why do fools fall in love? <laughs> Why do birds sing so gay? And lovers await the break of day. Alright, so play the intense action music and then cut to these geniuses driving to the North Pole. So, I think we broke into Santa's workshop, not really sure how we get in there, but after that we stumble across something we probably shouldn't have seen. Santa's in there on his Season 11 Duck Dynasty shit, busting his gun at some random elves for doing something that we don't know about. The snow will turn red with the blood of the night. It's 4 in the morning. I don't have the energy to react to something like this, but Sam, on the other hand. Holy knuckle cracking Kringles on a bullet train with a sack full of ketchup covered cheese logs. So, naturally, being investigators, you know, we're about to investigate. Uh, so, we start by talking to the elves. We talk to this one elf who's uh, probably on drugs. Definitely drugs. Probably Xanax. Yeah, most likely Xanax. So, what do you do here? I'm supposed to make this tree grow. Oh. By crying. Christmas trees love elf tears. Heck, who doesn't? It makes them grow up big and fast. But I'm too darn happy. I'll never be able to cry. So naturally, being the good Samaritans that we are, we decide to help the elf by flaming the fuck out of him. Uh, and then he proceeds to cry using the same audio track twice. <laughs> so... After that, we steal the elf's tears, and then Sam goes outside and uses the power of ba bad puns to grow an escalator, and then we jump down Santa's chimney. Here we grow. Oh, oh, oh my god, I'm on fire! So, you know, Santa's going through a midlife crisis, and he's seen some shit, so he doesn't trust anybody. So, naturally, when we appear down his chimney, he starts busting at us, so... As when we do, we decided to run up the chimney. So, naturally, after that happens, we're able to sneak back down there, and then Sam and Max realize that this is actually a stealth mission. Santa, you okay in there? Whoa, ho, ho, ho. He's on leg, you little... ah! Ah! After a little bit of exploring, we found some exorcism papers, and to progress the plot, the characters come to the conclusion that Santa is possessed. But we don't know anyone who's possessed. Or do we? So, after skiing down the escalator, we head back to the suburbs and find the first horseman. Which I probably should explain. So, to do the exorcism, we need the four toy horsemen of the apocalypse, naturally. The cops are obsolete no longer. Welcome to the grand opening of Pink the Car. We offer secure upgrades to a very exclusive clientele. How exclusive? Yeah. 
So they offer to give us the first horseman as a hood ornament if we can beat their VR mini game, which is just running over Torture Me Elmer, which is a doll in this game series. So after getting that horseman, we run into a woman who smells bad and fucking owns that shit. Who are you? I'm Stinky. So Stinky starts to brag about how smart she is and how dope her trivia contest is. People get to show off how little they know, and I get to show off how much I know. So we want to win that horseman, and to do that we need to win the trivia contest. And who knows the most shit? The person in the room who's old as fuck. But like the rest of the 21st century, it's really just a confounding mishmash of unfamiliar buzzwords tossed about willy-nilly. How can anyone think with all these bright lights shining everywhere? You know what you people need? Gas lamps. And so, you know, this being a Sam and Max game, the only way to get information out of people is by flaming the fuck out of them. A gentleman doesn't kiss and tell. That's not what your MySpace page says. Where's your hat? I'm an enormous stone head. Why should I wear a hat? To cover your enormous stone bald spot? I don't have Damn. a bald spot, you little pipsqueak. Are you kidding? It's as big as a Volvo! If that thing's to scale, I'm amazed Booth wasn't blinded by the reflection. So, naturally, the flaming works, and the head of Abraham Lincoln's statue decides to spill the tea, and we learn that Stinky's just cheating. That stinky person actually claims she wrote the Gettysburg Address. So, Sybil is modern as fuck. And naturally, she never leaves the comfort of the indoors, so she has absolutely no clue what went on with Rusty the Tin Can. What was all that commotion outside? Just a little urban renewal project oh. that got out of hand. By the way, don't worry about you it. Your building's you fine. Your office was closer to a good restaurant. <laughs> That's right. Why? <laughs> no reason. What fools must come down. Why are you fools making all that damn racket? Just to tell you once again, Oh god. We also learn that, as with most anyone who plays video games, Sybil has a large amount of pent up regret. If I weren't trying to impress Abe, I'd claw that lying witch's eyes out! Uh, so in this shop, we also run into the roach she's possessed. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. So we find out that. Him being possessed was just a prank, and it's how he copes with the death of his dad? Negative! Except for my dad, they're all a bunch of spineless ladybugs. Oh, they are female. Aren't all bugs spineless? Not in my regiment. I mean... If didn't have a spine, by God, my dad would make you grow a pair! A pair, a pair of, of spines? Spine. So, after that, a pair of spines, what the fuck? Uh, we talk to, uh, we talk more to the Roach, and we give him our ideas about the trivia contest, and he seems to be in agreement, even though he's fucking wrong. We think it's D. Excellent choice, man. Proceed. Okay, so, I'm in the middle of editing for this video, and I opened sticky notes for the first time in a really long time, and I've come across this sticky note, and oh boy, this one right here, which is literally a masterpiece, I have no clue where I copied this from, but it just spams the end of the United States of America. And at the end, at the end of this, this masterpiece, it says existential crisis, which is probably one of the best things I've seen in quite a while. So the question is, what year did the War of 1812 happen in? So everyone divulges their answers, and we come to find out that 1812 is actually fucking wrong. What? I chose A. Of course you oh. did, dear. <laughs> because you're wrong. Lots of restaurants do things for birthdays, but I don't think I've ever seen someone act so happy and look so sad in my life. Ah! Oh, I thought you were my family. They always try to surprise me on my birthday. Did someone say birthday? What? What the hell did I just... What is go... What is go... What? What? That was weird. So we make a tiny mistake in our setup for this round of trivia, and naturally, she calls everyone wrong. We chose C. Refreshing, and yet wrong. 
the answer was one nobody chose. A. So for this last one, we trick everyone into picking the answers that we want them to. I chose B. I chose B. The answer is D. D. We chose A. We beat the game, take the prize, and Smelly goes from Smelly the Genius to Smelly, but just Smelly. No, that's wrong. Oh, I guess it must be right. Then Max gives a description for the toy that's way too detailed for the quality of It's the limited edition Pestilence <laughs> maquette with super detailed open source. So after that, we go to Bosco's store, and as has worked with everyone else, we attempt to flame the fuck out of him. It is. Bosco, your disguise, it's, it's, it's hideous. Claw my eyes out, Sam. I oh my God, is it just it. Bosco? But if I claw my own eyes out first, little buddy, I'm not wearing a disguise. <laughs> of course he's not wearing a disguise. Without a wig or hat or something. So, contrary to everything we've ever known and everything we've ever come to believe in, this doesn't work. Bosco just kind of deflects and starts talking about his dingling. My package! What? Max over here is like, what the fuck did you just call me? Boy, just like Bosco. slightly. So, Bosco begins rambling on about an Illuminati shadow corporation known as them, but he doesn't say them by name because he's terrified of them. He's smiling or is his beard off? Protect you from T H E M. Them? What? Ah! <laughs> what? Who's them? Ah! That's exactly what I'm trying to figure out. I'm watching. I'm listening. He's just gonna I scream every time someone says them. Well, if you do, tell them. Ah! Okay, yes. Okay. Old, great. Fast. Them. Ah! I pitch black man scream and proving that this game is full of. Terrible, 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 terrible jokes. And then acknowledging that in game. He's certainly not a cluist. What is that joke? He doesn't have a clue. Yeah, I got it. And then we have dialogue for the sake of having dialogue. And this was honestly probably a really funny joke when the game came out, but now it's just extremely overused. And did you know people who say that something looks interesting are more likely to be serial killers? More likely than who? Than non-serial killers. It's a fact. A fact they don't want you to know. Who doesn't want me to know? Exactly. What? <laughs> wow. That's why I need the personal antipathy registration annulment and non-negational omnifunctional identification device. That's just paranoid. Technically, yes it is. So after that cringe fest of a scene comes to a close, we move on to Bosco talking about his dingling again. Say Bosco, what's hey in guys, the... does my package sound like it's ticking to you? Not your best pickup line, Bosco. Oh, I don't know. I think my that package pick is line. the bomb. Now that's um. a pickup line. <laughs> so by taking a step back and looking at the scanner, we can come to the conclusion that inside the present that's sitting on Bosco's counter is actually one of the horsemen that we're looking for. Yeah, that was the horseman. Hey, that looks like one of the four horsemen action figures. What is that it's holding? Is that hey, a that donut? Looks like one of the four horsemen action figures. I, d I have no clue what that is. Okay, what are these? How does he get these shots? Cameras. I actually really enjoyed this ship. Our team really spit shine this one. Weenie jerky. There's still weenies. You make jerky out of weenie, Sam. You're not old enough to know, and neither am I. Oh, oh no. Bosco's rule of thumb number one: be prepared for anything. What is that? He say cryogenic. So we leave Bosco's shop. Check the news for anything interesting, and then head down the street. Canada sells U.S. to MacroHard Corporation. I wondered why the stock market kept crashing. New S and M season. New S and M season. It's a shame you don't wear collars, Sam. It says oh. you're coming back in style. I... I'm sitting here thinking it's a fourth wall break. Nope. 
It's just great. Great. Love that. So, Jimmy Two Teeth, who has taken over Rusty the Tin Can, just so happens to have the fourth horseman. And then he makes pop culture references. Hey, my missing boxing gloves! That's my lucky glove cut! Jimmy Two Teeth, what are you and your unsavory pals doing in the burned out husk of this robot? The first rule is we don't talk about what goes on in the burned out husk of this robot. Hey. What? So now for the second rule of the Sam and Max series. If it exists, try shooting it. See you, second. First rule of business, if it exists, shoot it. Okay, it doesn't work. After the shooting didn't work, we tried to get Jimmy to come out the robot so we could flame him, but he just kind of deflects with this phrase. Nothing doing. So, we go back into our apartment to see if we can try to find something to get Jimmy to come out with, and then Max starts picking his belly button, which is really strange because I didn't think he had one. Yeah, Max doesn't work with it. Is he picking his- he doesn't have a belly button, what? Sometimes, jokes are just classics. Did not have sex with that woman. <laughs> Actually legendary. So, with a Chuck E. Cheese arcade game, we use our gun and take out our anger on Jimmy and clear our heads so we can solve the problem. Also, after shooting these pieces, they're perfectly fine. What? Um... Oh, skill boy. Uh, so after that, we find Leonard in the closet. Still. After like half of a half of a game, he, he's still in there. Like, are we feet? How is he still in there? How is he surviving? Does he have food and, and water? And he's tied up. So. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> that was not, oh, that was not, uh, that was not language, of course not, oh. Uh, what? Hey. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Hey. <laughs> well, you know, everything is still in here, just like it, just like it should be. Even Leonard. <laughs> Why is Leonard still in here? <laughs> How have we been keeping- Are we feeding this man? <laughs> All of that adventuring helped us to remember that we had the Boxing Betty doll, and then we sent that in there to fight the rats. Yeah. Oh, we can see this for some- No bad- How the hell does this work without batteries? So, we completely demolish some rats in the ring. Like, don't try to fight no more. You can't take me. Got him. Shit. So, Jimmy Two Teeth's boxing glove is a one shot. But magically, through the power of the replay button, we managed to take him down easy peasy. Okay. Oop, there we go. There we go. So after that, we get the horseman we've been looking for. It's the super exclusive war action figure. Insert non offensive comment here. Is he about to. Goodbye, cruel world. Oh, Chill. Nice so naturally, with Jimmy being depressed on that level, we did what anyone would do in that kind of situation and flame the fuck out of him. Like, I'm not kidding. You thought we flamed him before? We really flamed his shit this time. What? How could I lose? I'm no expert, Jimmy, but I bet being a loser helps. Jimmy, this isn't like you. What do you mean? You're not the suicidal type. You don't have the guts or the follow through. Sorry, Jimmy. It's just that suicide is too horrible for me to even contemplate. Even though we'd all be happier if you were dead. Uh. You know, your wife's gonna give you hell if you kill yourself. Mary? She left me! You're overreacting, Jimmy. You think? 
Sure, your wife probably never really loved you in the first place. <laughs> well, this took a turn for the darker, uh, darker side of things. So, with how sad we were with everything that was going on with Jimmy, we decided to take a trip down to Bosco's store and see if he had anything that would help us. And with no luck, we decided to just start shooting everything. Completely enraged and trying to terrorize Bosco because he's been a very annoying character during this playthrough. Uh, yeah, we just started, started shooting everything. Literally everything. <laughs> Shoot all of Bosco's stuff. <laughs> I guess I can just ignore him, but that's like... So we decided that Bosco had had enough terror for one day, and we left. And then we changed our minds instantly and went back in to do it some more. So, it was the second shooting, definitely the second shooting, that helped us to realize that terrorism was actually the way to go when it came to getting the horsemen from Bosco. So we drove back to the North Pole. Drove. By car. <laughs> Continuing with our plan, we get a really really loud stopwatch and mail it to Bosco Unabomber style so that he thinks it's his bomb that he's been waiting for. But he thinks it's a bomb. Early with a constant reminder that they're always running late. Who's it for? Bosco. Bosco might like that. So being the sick and twisted people that we are, we then drive back to the suburbs to watch Bosco and his fear and torment. We can do it together. Just got a package, and this one's ticking louder than all five of Larry King's pacemakers put together. Thank it's God. Gotta be my mama's bomb. I'm gonna blow it to kingdom come. Bomb be gone. Now, while he's distracted, Max, grab the package and let's get. Look, Sam, it's the supersized famine figure with realistic binging and purging action. Grab it! Don't, don't just stand there. Grab it so we can run. And it is a hot dog. What the hell? Okay, so now we can we have all the horsemen and. Where's my package, dear God? They took it, and they took it. <laughs> Why doesn't he just assume that we took it? What? So after that, we head back to the North Pole and gather information about the demon song that we're supposed to sing to exercise it. The first place we check is the crate with random purple sludge dripping out of it. What is this gelatinous goo? But for once, I don't find myself wanting to eat it. There's a mailing label. To what? Santa. From Lower Manitoba. <laughs> and they said Santa never Lower gets Manitoba. Fit. After that, you know, they left their computer unlocked, so we also go snooping around in that to see what we can find. I wonder what the elves have on their office computer. Was that more of the purple oh, slice? Their email. It's a high score list for Mimesaver. Yep. Either Let's third see. place. Uh... Professor, Wiggles, shambling corporate presents? How'd that get there? Well, pretty soon it's gonna be all Max. Now, how do I start a new game? Sorry, I think it's frozen. So, with all the information we gathered, we finally successfully sing the song, exercise the demon, and then long as hell cutscene. Like Minesweeper. Hey, shambling corporate presence. There we go. It's different this time. And what the hell is happening? The horseman just go to heaven to summon the demon? Second now, Santa's gonna walk out that door demon free and Yeah, you know, I had a feeling it was them that was possessed. Wait, but he you mean but I thought No. <laughs> it's gonna be a dentist. That's fantastic, actually. Oh, 
And Santa's just Arnold Schwarzenegger. Perfect. What? Make sure you have the spirits of Christmas to contain the beast, or you're screwed. The spirits of Christmas? It's up to you to save Christmas! Yep, we're screwed. What? So, after finding out that it was our job to save Christmas, uh, we kind of just ignored that and looked at some of the gifts that we could send out and had a quick laugh. <laughs> Grandma's happy pills. Never mind. So, then we get back on task, and even though Santa just kind of ran out of his office, the door locked, I guess, and then we snuck back in through the escalator tree entrance. Escalator, that's just a tree? What? So, for some reason, we know the combination to Santa's safe, and then the Christmas spirits, which is actual spirits, is in alcohol, come out of the bottle that we open up from inside, and they start telling us the plot of the game. There we go. Oh my god, they meant Christmas spirits as an actual spirit, and they're all Santa. Of course they are. What the hell is going on? Oh, it's you. You know us? We know all those who have ever ruined Christmas. Great. The spirit of Christmas past, brothers. I am the spirit of Christmas present. And that cat's the spirit of Christmas yet to come. Who defeat the demon. I'm glad they just know the entire plot of this game. So, after somewhat learning that... So, after semi-learning that Santa is somewhat of a stoner, we go with the spirits into the future? I don't even... What?! Unless we learn how to fly, we're destined to spend the remainder of our days on a tiny outcropping surrounded by impossibly hot lava, ash, and soot. I don't mind, Sam, as long as I'm with my best friend. Oh, that's sweet, little pal. Hey, give me one of those pork rinds you were carrying. Sorry, buddy. I already ate them all. We're gonna die! <laughs> Somebody help! So, naturally, being the genius, I try to shoot us. Yep. If I was going to, I would have done it long before now. <laughs> no, that's just what I'd expect me to do. Oh, no. So, after trying to shoot us didn't work, I talked to the ghost of Christmas past about going back to the past to see whatever was going on there. The cat's ready to take a freaky trip to the past. Leonard. You are here to right a terrible wrong you once committed. Okay. We have to stop ourselves from doing yo mama jokes? Just watch. See you around, sucker! Wait, aren't you gonna untie me? Hello? Guys? So we learned that even though we've locked Leonard away in our closet, and he's probably got quite the miserable existence right now, uh, there are still worse things out there. And by that, I mean we kind of ruined Jimmy's life. And we've done it again, very recently, which is kind of cool. Where's all the money that's gonna save our dead tiny Timmy? Yes, Daddy. Where the f*** is it? <laughs> it's hopeless. <laughs> the doctors say his Tourette's syndrome will kill him if they don't operate soon. Don't cry, Mommy. I'll get the f*** with the f*** the f*** angels. Jesus it's all Christ. a bust, man. Got a mouth Every on time him. I try to make an honest living, Sam and Max smack me down. So get your lucky boxing glove and go fight! I... I don't have it no more! Sam and Max took it! Again with Sam and Max! If you spend more time boxing and less time sitting around watching TV, you'd be champ! <laughs> oh my god! Jesus Christ. I'll go call the doctor to ease his suffering! Did I mention that we were ghosts, by the way? Hey, look, what I'm about to say is an accident. I didn't mean to say that, so stay on my comments. I honestly thought we were going to feel him. Free him, not feel him. What the hell? Pause. So, what? What is even... Oh, this wall just isn't here in the past. I love that. Then we learn that time is kind of lagging for some reason. 
Sam and Max, witness how your reckless carelessness hurts hey, those. Wait a second. This isn't the present. You took us to the past. Past us are standing right there. I know that. Just give it a minute to catch up. So the Pestilence doll ended up summoning the Roach's family when we got it, and you know how he hates his family, so now we gotta help him with that. I'm never leaving! Mayday! Mayday! Request immediate evac! Immediate evac! So what, we have to rekindle the bug's love for his family? Teach him what they really mean to him? Oh my, no! Have you seen them? They're awful! You have to get rid of them! Oh boy! I'll go get my stomping boots! Non-violently! So then we decide to leave and head back to civilization in the current time. And we just kind of ignore Santa and his fight with the demon that we unleashed and we take a quick drive all the way back from the North Pole. Or what's left of Wait, what the hell is going on with Santa up there? <laughs> Santa's just like, help me. Uh, we're, we're gonna go back to town for a little while, actually. That monster reminds me of something. I feel like it might have been in the, uh, the, uh, Cartoon Hour Christmas special. Just maybe. So, this beast right here is what I was talking about, and those come from the Cartoon Network alien invasion event that they had going on for a little while. Anyways, after that, we go into the diner, Stinky's Diner, and then we talk to the Roach, and we ask him if he could get his family to leave on his own. He says no, and then we just kind of ignore his problems. Can't you get your family to leave? Ha! This sorry regiment never listens to me. These halfwits would only listen to my father. God rest his exoskeleton. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. It is now 7 in the morning. It's been like, what, 3 hours just editing this? Like, since 4? And I started way before that. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm in it here. Um, sorry this video took so long to get up. It was painful to edit and took forever to do. But, uh, I'll probably be back next week with more consistent and more quality uploads. You see, you f***ing You see! Jesus Christ. Oh, it just one shot. I'll take my leave of this wretched place. Or just disappear. Out of fucking nowhere. What? He's gone. I found the bear homeland. Oh no, there must be some aliens nearby. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Just gonna edit it out. Okay. <laughs>